Welcome back, everybody. Today we're doing a deep dive into material science and how we can make things super durable. Oh, yeah, definitely. So you wanted to unlock the secrets behind how to make super durable materials, right? Right. Well, get this. The answers might actually be hidden in plain sight, like at the atomic level. Yeah, exactly. There was this new study in science that's basically cracking the code of how materials are structured and how we can, like, make them tougher. It's pretty cool stuff. So it's kind of like... Um, yeah. Imagine a brick wall, right? Yeah. It's super strong because of how the bricks fit together. Yeah. But now imagine that we could actually control the mortar between those bricks at the atomic level. Exactly. That's basically what this research is all about. Yeah. So you know how like most materials are actually made up of tons of tiny crystals? Uh -huh. Well, the boundaries between those crystals, we call them grain boundaries. Okay. Those are really important. They're key. So they're like the glue. Yeah. Holding those crystals together. Yeah, scientists have known for a long time that grain boundaries really matter. Right. But they haven't really understood how they actually impact a material's properties mm. until now. So this is like a big mystery that we're finally figuring out. Yeah, it really is a big deal. This study actually used advanced microscopy and computer simulations Wow. to see what's happening at these grain boundaries. So it's like they have a super-powered magnifying glass on the atomic world? That's a great way to put it. So they could really actually see the atoms and the boundaries. Not only could they, they see it, uh, they could actually model these structures too. That's wild. It's like building a 3D puzzle. Of atoms. Of atoms, yeah. In this research, they focus specifically on titanium. Right, titanium, that's like the super strong metal. Yeah, exactly. It's used in everything, like airplanes to medical implants. Oh, wow, yeah. And they were really interested in what happens when you add iron to titanium. Okay, interesting. So what they found was really surprising. What they found? So the iron doesn't just spread evenly throughout the titanium. Okay. It actually forms these like cage-like structures right at the grain boundaries. Cage-like structures? What do those look like? They're called icosahedrons. Icosahedrons. Yeah, it's this really cool shape. What is that? It's kind of like, oh, uh, yeah. picture a geodesic dome, but tiny and made of atoms. Whoa. So the iron is trapped inside this cage. Okay. And the titanium atoms form the points of the cage. So like the iron's trapped and the titanium's holding it in place. Exactly. And this is really important because these cages, they can actually hold a lot of iron. Mm. which makes the material even stronger and more resistant to damage. Oh, wow. So it's like reinforcing it from the inside out. Yeah. And the really cool part is these cages, they can form different patterns too. So different arrangements. Yeah, which gives the material different properties. So it's like having a toolkit for building materials. Exactly. You can tweak the amount of iron and how the cages are arranged to get like exactly the properties you need. That's incredible. Like you could make something super strong or super flexible just by changing how the atoms are arranged. Exactly. So what are the implications of this? Like where could this lead? Well, I mean, just imagine a world with like buildings that last for centuries or airplanes that are way lighter and more fuel efficient. Yeah. This research could lead to a whole new generation of super durable materials for everything, like you said, from bridges to spacecraft. Wow, that's amazing. And it all comes down to these tiny cages of atoms. It all starts at the atomic level. So I guess next time I see something made of metal, I'll have to remember that there's this hidden world of atoms at play. Definitely. And scientists are just starting to figure out all of its secrets. Yeah, we're really just scratching the surface. So this research, they focused on titanium, right? But could this cage-like structure be found in other materials too? That's a great question and one that scientists are definitely looking into. Like, could we use this technique to strengthen plastics or ceramics or even wood? Yeah, exactly. I mean, imagine a wooden beam that's <clears throat> as strong as steel. That would be revolutionary. I mean, it just opens up a whole new world of possibility. It really does, and that's what makes this research so exciting. Well, I'm definitely gonna be keeping my eye on this. Me too. Yep. I can't wait to see what they discover next. I think we've only just begun to unlock the secrets of the atomic world. I think you're right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for today's deep dive. We hope you enjoyed this fascinating look into the world of materials science. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. See ya. It basically means the atoms are arranged in this pattern that doesn't repeat in a regular way. Wait, quasi-crystalline? So they're crystals, but not quite. You got, they have this unique combo of order and disorder. Mm. They have long-range order, so there's a pattern there. Right. But that pattern doesn't repeat periodically like a normal crystal would. Okay, so these icosahedral cages arranged in this quasi-crystalline structure, mm -hmm. 
That's the secret sauce here. Yeah, it's a big part of it. These uh, periodic quasicrystalline structures. Okay. They let the material hold more iron and they make it stronger. Okay. They also like influence how the material responds to stress and strain. So it's more resilient. Yeah, less prone to damage. That's fascinating. So this research was on titanium? Right. What about other materials? Could we use this to strengthen steel, aluminum, or even wood? You're thinking along the right lines. This study on titanium, it's like opening a door to a whole new world of possibilities. Oh, wow. Like the principles that they uncover the role of icosahedral structures at grain boundaries. Right. We could potentially apply this to a ton of different materials. So we could have super strong steel for skyscrapers that are like way taller. Exactly. Or ultra lightweight aluminum for cars that are super fuel efficient. Exactly. And it goes beyond just metals. Oh, it has to Imagine be. applying these principles to ceramics, plastics, even wood. Okay, now we're talking. What if we could make a wooden beam that was as strong as steel? Whoa. Okay, <laughs> hold on. If it were that easy, why don't we have super materials everywhere? That's a great point. There's got to be some challenges, right? There are some hurdles to overcome. Like what? Like scaling up this technology from a lab to industrial production. Yeah. It's a big challenge. Right. It's one thing to manipulate atoms in a lab. Right. But it's a whole other thing to do it on an assembly line. Exactly. We need to develop new manufacturing techniques right. that can precisely control the formation of these icosahedral structures, but on a large scale. Yeah, that makes sense. And then there's the economic side of things, too. Right. These new techniques, they need to be cost effective if we want to use them for large scale production. Right. It's a balance between scientific breakthrough and making it actually affordable. So it's not just about the science, it's about the engineering and the economics, too. Exactly. It's a whole ecosystem. That needs to come together. Yeah, to make this work. This is so fascinating. It, it really shows how much goes on behind the scenes. It does. Before a scientific discovery actually turns into something that helps us in our everyday lives. And it's worth noting that this research isn't just about making things stronger. Oh, there are other applications, too. Think about it. By controlling the structure of these grain boundaries, we could potentially influence a whole range of properties. Oh, wow. Like what? Flexibility, conductivity, heat resistance, even corrosion resistance. Wait, so you're telling me we could have materials that are not just strong, but also super flexible. Exactly. Or materials that can conduct electricity with almost no resistance. You got it. The, the possibilities are pretty much endless. It's like having a toolbox full of amazing new materials, yeah. each with their own superpower. I like that analogy. And the real beauty of all of this is that it gives us a blueprint mm. for how to manipulate these properties to get the results that we want. So we're moving from just discovering materials to actually designing them. Exactly. It's like we have the secret code now. It's pretty amazing. But let's get back to those icosahedrons for a minute. Mm -hmm. We've talked about their ship. Right. But what is it that makes them so good at strengthening things? It's a combination of factors. Yeah. So like we discussed the echosahedral shape itself, mm -hmm. it's inherently strong and stable. Okay. It's a really efficient way to pack atoms together. And that density, yeah. it makes the material stronger overall. So it's like fitting puzzle pieces together. Yeah. The tighter they fit, the stronger the bond. Exactly. And then on top of that, yeah. these cages can form these aperiodic clusters, uh -huh. which makes the structure more flexible and adaptable. Right. So we've got the strong shape and the flexible arrangement. Yeah. What else? And then remember how we talked about quasi-crystals? Yeah. The periodic quasi-crystalline nature of these clusters? Okay. That also plays a big role. In what? It helps the material resist deformation and fracture. Interesting. It's like if you're building a wall with bricks of different shapes and sizes, yeah. it's way harder to break through. Ah, I see. So it's like building a fortress at the atomic level. Exactly. And yeah. all of these factors combined, they make a material that's not just strong, but also super resilient. Wow, this is amazing to think that something as small as an atom <laughs> I know, right? can completely change how durable something is. It really highlights the importance of basic research. Yeah. You know, sometimes the biggest discoveries come from looking at the tiniest things. Yeah, that's a good point. So you mentioned that scientists used iron to create these cages in titanium. Right. What about other elements? Could you use carbon or gold or something like that? That's a great question, and it's definitely something that researchers are looking into. Uh -huh. This study is just the beginning. Uh -huh. It's opened up a whole new world for material design. Yeah, it's not just iron. 
They're experimenting with a bunch of different elements. Oh, wow. Seeing if they can find combinations that produce even cooler results. So it's like they're looking for the perfect recipe. Yeah. Mixing and matching elements to get specific properties. Exactly like a chef trying out different spices to make the perfect dish. I like that analogy. So what you're saying is the real power of this research is yeah. Yeah. we can customize and fine-tune materials. That's exactly it. We could have materials that are not just stronger, but also lighter, more flexible, more resistant to heat or corrosion. So the possibilities really are endless. Pretty much. It's like we're entering a new age of alchemy. Uh-huh. I like that. But instead of turning lead into gold, we're turning regular materials into super materials. That's a great way to put it. And the best part is right. we're really just getting started. Right. There's so much more to learn and discover. Who knows what kind of amazing materials we'll be able to create in the future. It's mind-blowing. We've gone from talking about brick walls to atom cages uh, to a whole new world of material possibilities. That's pretty wild. It seems like the future of material science is super exciting. It is. There's no doubt we'll keep seeing huge discoveries uh -huh. that'll totally change how we live, work, and even interact with the world around us. Okay, so next time I see a bridge or building yeah. or even just like a tool, yeah. I'll have to remember there's this hidden world of atoms at work. It's all happening at the atomic level. And scientists are working hard to unlock its secrets <laughs> and make those materials even better. Stronger, lighter, more durable, you name it. This has been a really amazing deep dive. It has. I feel like we've learned so much about the potential of this stuff. Definitely. Manipulating materials at the atomic level. I mean, it could have such a huge impact on the world. I agree. As we continue to explore and understand how things work at the atomic level. Yeah. It just unlocks more and more possibilities for new materials. That's so cool. All right, so that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of material science. And until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep. See ya.